Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. It's so great to celebrate Christmas Eve together online and in person. So uh, let's worship together. Let's sing some Christmas songs. Rejoice in our salvation. Take it away, Joy. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, church family. Come on, let's shout. Let's sing. Our Savior was born. Amen. Come on, sing this. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Come on, sing it out. Shepherds kept their watching for the silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens, there shone a holy light. Come on, see. Whoa, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Shepherds' feet are trembled when the low above the earth. Bring out the angels' chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Oh, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in the lonely manger, the humble Christ was born and brought us God's salvation that blessed the Christmas morn. Come on, sing it. Whoa, go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Come on, sing it. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere, sing it louder. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Sing go, go. Tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere, go. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Jesus, that Jesus Christ is born. That Jesus Christ is born. I'll give a shout of praise, glory to God in the highest. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Echoing their joy strength. Come on. Go. tidings be which inspire your heavenly song oh 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 in excelsis Deo
Come to Bethlehem. Come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels see. Come adore on bending knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Shout of praise, glory to God in the highest, amen. Come on, let's adore our King. For he is here in this place. He's born. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. In Christ the Lord. Come on, sing. Oh, come. We talk him. Oh, come. Oh, ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, ye, oh, come ye to bear. Let's lift your voice. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ, oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ, the Lord, Christ, the Lord. Oh, King, we love you, King Jesus. Come on, just lift your heart right now in this moment, in your homes, with your families.
Let's adore our King. Let's worship in this moment. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him, Christ the Lord. He alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. For he alone he is worthy. For he alone is worthy. He cries the Lord. In time lift your heart. We give you all the glory. 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 We give Christ the Lord. Yes, we worship you. Jesus, thank you for saving us, for restoring us, renewing us, for healing us. Thank you for your love, King Jesus. We worship you. We adore you. Open our hearts right now as we long to hear your message. Continue to be with our family at home. Continue to inspire us, encourage us, uplift us. Fill this place, fill our homes with your joy, with your peace, with your love. We long to hear from you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, amen. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. You know, we decided to say Merry Christmas rather than Happy Christmas. It's because happy is really how our heart may feel at a time, period of time. But merry means I'm choosing an action. I'm choosing to make joy in my heart. I'm choosing to encourage you, and you're choosing to encourage me. So let's try that again. Merry Christmas, everybody. I love it. Merry Christmas. We're in a series, just a two part series here as we celebrate on Christmas Eve. It's Faith over fear. That's our series. In, in this COVID crisis and this 2020 crazy year of, of politics and everything that's gone just kind of bonkers, right, it is choosing to celebrate our faith. We're choosing faith over fear. We're not going to give in to fear. God is greater than all this. Amen? All right. Amen. So here's our remember verse. This is Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. We make a choice. I'm, I'm telling my own soul. Rejoice in the Lord. God is good and he is with us and he is for us. It says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. The Lord is coming back. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. So pray more, worry less. Whatever you are concerned about, whatever your difficulty you're going through, we're choosing to let God know our difficulties. Let God know where our heart is, is hurting. Let God know the, the frustrations that you're feeling. Make God your confidence and trust in him. So we pray about everything and then the peace of God, which transcends all all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So I want to pause again tonight, and and I want to encourage you to tell me something. Tell me where God has shown up in your life in 2020. I I don't want to hear about all the the discouragement that we've all faced. We've talked about that. We've shared that. Uh, Facebook is full of that, right? Uh, If if you could list all the complaints of Facebook or take them all off, there wouldn't be any Facebook anymore, right? There's a lot of complaints on Facebook, but let's let people know that we have hope 
in Jesus. So who will help me out here? Who can say something that happened this year, 2020, something that is good? Where did God show up? Marriages, Marriages yes. People got married this year, and that's pretty cool, right? Babies, we've had a lot of babies at Cornerstone this year. Uh, I don't know if it's with the COVID season or what, but praise God, we've had a lot of babies this year. Um, what else? A new boat, yes, all right. Uh, God's showing up in our finances. God's showing up in our lives, in our health. Uh, some of us have gotten sick and got through that sickness. Some of us are just hoping and, and praying that God is gonna show up this Christmas, maybe with your family. And maybe it's a conversation you've been waiting for and and. I'm praying with you. Uh, God is good. He is faithful, and he is for us. He is not against us. So uh, on, on the YouTube channel here, if you will uh, shrink it from full screen, there's a chat room there, and, and you can chat on there. and Just say what you're thankful for. Say how God has shown up in your life. And, and if you're watching this after the premiere, uh, you can just put in the comments you know, where God has blessed you and where you've seen God at work in your family or in your life. We need to encourage each other. The world needs to see that there's hope in Jesus Christ. Christ. So our message today, or this evening, is it's called A Wonderful, Our Wonderful Counselor. Jesus is our counselor. He's our confidant. We can go to him when we're hurting. We can go to him when we're struggling. And he knows, he understands, he cares about us, not only spiritually, but he cares about us physically. He cares about us emotionally. So Luke chapter 2, this is the Christmas story from Luke, and I love what we read here. And there were shepherds living in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And what's interesting here is that shepherds is probably the lowliest of low jobs you could get. It's, it's one of those jobs that no one would want. You are only, like, if you're family were shepherds, you might wind up getting into that, but it wouldn't be something you would choose, you know? Um, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. I, I would be. I mean, if an angel showed up, I'd be like, what's up? What did I do? But the angel said to him, do not be afraid. Faith over fear. Do not be afraid I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people, starting with the lowliest of people, the, the shepherds, for all people, from you to the wise men, for all people, those who are close, those who are far off. This is good news. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. He's the Messiah. He's the Savior, the one that we've longed for. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger. Now just picture for a moment. I, I had a grandson born this year, not too long ago. And praise God, we have amazing, amazing medicine today and hospitals and uh, Mary Birch is, I think, one of the best ever. Um, pretty sure he wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for our doctors and nurses in the hospital. God is so good. I can't imagine my grandson being born in a, in a manger. But Jesus starts off as the lowliest of births. Suddenly, after this announcement, suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. If you have a right relationship with God, you will have peace. Peace on whom his favor rests. And from the lowliest of people, the shepherds, to kings and queens. If you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you can have his peace. And that's what I'm praying for you this Christmas, that you would experience God's peace like never before. See, we can choose faith over fear. We can choose faith over fear because Jesus 
understands our struggles. Uh, Jesus, being God, he chose to put on flesh. He came down as a, a little baby, and, and not born in a palace, which he deserved if he's going to be born anywhere on the planet, or a hospital like Mary Birch here in San Diego. No, the lowliest of births, the humblest of births, in a sh- stable where there's animals. This prophecy of his birth foretold about 700 years before he was born. In Isaiah 9, 6, we, we hear this often on TV, uh, uh, the Peanuts Christmas, I love that. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. You can almost hear Linus's voice, can't you? <laughs> and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called, look at the titles Jesus owns. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus is God in flesh. And I want to focus in on the wonderful counselor part because he understands what we're going through. In, in, in the book of Hebrews, it says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, it says, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. He didn't have to, but he chose to. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. You see, because of our sin, we have failed, and therefore death entered the world. So for Jesus to break this power, he had to put on flesh so that he could die for us in our place. Verse 17 says, Therefore it was necessary for him to be in every respect like his, like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the world. Now just pause for a moment. A a priest's role in this time was to offer up a sacrifice for the people. Jesus is the high priest who offers up his own life for us. So verse 18, it says, since he himself has gone through suffering and testings, he is able to help us when we are being tested. Jesus understands our struggles. I I remember when I became a believer in Christ in high school, I got through a lot of difficulties in my life, a lot of abuse and I had a long history. Um, And I remember feeling that God just never could understand me. And then my friend who discipled me, a a fireman who loved Jesus, he said, any emotion you've ever gone through, whether it's loss, whether it's physical pain or emotional pain, you can see that in Jesus. He went through. If you've been betrayed, he's been betrayed. If you've gone through physical pain, and maybe you're going through it right now, can you imagine any greater pain than being on the cross? Jesus was tempted, just like you and I have been tempted. He's gone through everything. So when we call out to Jesus, Jesus, do you understand? He says, yes. I chose to go through all of that so that we could have a relationship Jesus understands our struggles. He loves us. We can choose faith over fear because Jesus cares for our needs. He doesn't just care for our spiritual needs, but he cares for our physical needs and our emotional needs. This is out of the Sermon on the Mount, a very popular sermon of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, This is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Remember, faith over fear. 
not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? God cares about your physical needs. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? If God cares about the birds, doesn't he care a lot more about you and I? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? If we could just be honest, in this last 10 months or so that we've all experienced COVID here in America, I've worried, you've worried, there's been times when a loved one has been sick or there's been times when finances have been tight. There, there's been a lot that we've all gone through together. And what has that added to our life? If anything, it, it didn't add, it took away maybe our health. <laughs> um, we get short-tempered with one another. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And the answer is no. God cares. He cares about our needs the second uh, truth here, uh, he cares about our needs. The first truth is Jesus understands our struggles. And then the third truth is Jesus is always available. He's always available. Right now, as, as you are going through whatever struggle you're going through, whatever heartache, whatever loss you're going through, he is available. If it's three in the morning, you can call on Jesus and he'll always listen. He cares about you. Psalm 46, what a great promise. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. He's always with us. He doesn't abandon us. Even when we have a bad attitude, he still cares about us. He's still with us, and he loves us, and he cares about us. He's available. He's our refuge. He's our strength. He's ever-present. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar, roar and foam and the mountains quake and with their surging. I mean, just think about the worst that could happen, an earthquake, a tsunami. I mean, no matter what could happen in our lives, God still cares, and he's with us. He's for us. We don't have to fear because God is on our side. He cares about our needs. And then it says the word Selah. You know what that word means? It's let's celebrate through music. It's like a musical interlude. Let's, let's, let's just praise God with our instruments. And, and I love that we have an amazing worship music here at Cornerstone. I mean, Pastor Joy and the team do an incredible job, and we are blessed. But it would be meaningless if you didn't join in too because it's our voices, it's our instruments, lifting it up and worshiping God, an audience truly of one. Back to Hebrews 4. Look at this passage. Speaking of Jesus, this high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy. We will find grace to help us when we need it the most. This Christmas, 2020, if you need God's grace, if you need more of his mercy, you can come boldly to him. If you have a relationship with him, he wants to hear your voice. He wants to have a deep relationship with each and every one of us. So today, whether you're, you're close or whether you're far off, would you come boldly to his throne asking for his mercy, his grace? If, if you don't already have a relationship with Jesus, would you make tonight the night of your salvation? Would you invite him into your life? He loves you. 
He cares about you so much that he was willing to go to the cross to pay for your sins and your shame so that you could have a relationship, a personal, intimate relationship with God Almighty. He is our wonderful counselor. This verse here tells us how we can make that step of faith. It says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It, it's a personal confession. And, and to confess him as our Lord means I'm surrendering to his authority. And believing that he not only died for your sins, but he also raised up the third day, that he has power over death. So if you would pray with me right now, and as we pray, if you know Christ as your Lord and Savior, would you just thank him for being your counselor, for caring about your needs, that he understands, he, he understands because he himself has gone through every hurt, every pain imaginable. He relates, he understands. And just worship him and thank him and praise him. And as we're praying, if you do not yet have a personal relationship with him, would you make this moment, this Christmas 2020, the day of your salvation? If that's the, the prayer of your heart, would you just pray along with me? Say, dear Jesus, I... I come to you, I, I am a sinner, I, I fall short of your holiness. God, I, I confess, I, I've, I've done many wrong things. I've had many wrong attitudes. And God, I need your forgiveness. So I ask that Jesus, you come into my life, that you would forgive me of my sins, that you would give me a home in heaven. I confess right now that, Jesus, you are my Lord. I surrender my life to your lordship, to your authority. Help me now to live my life to honor you the best I know how. It is in the powerful name of Jesus we pray. And God's people said, amen. If you made a decision tonight... Uh, please let me know by texting 858-682-2424 and, and just text the word belief. It would be our joy to connect with you and pray with you and encourage you. And if you don't already have a study Bible, it would be our pleasure to give you a study Bible so you can grow in your faith. Uh, we're to celebrate communion now. And communion is part of our relationship with Jesus Christ. We're celebrating his death, burial, and resurrection. But understand, as we celebrate his death, uh, we, we're believing that he died for our sins. It's a personal relationship. So if you would take this wafer, the bread here reminds us, reminds us of the body of Christ, that he took our sins and our shame. It was all placed on him. Uh, eat this bread in remembrance of Christ's body for you. And this cup is a reminder of the blood of Christ. That literally he would have to give his life for our sins. He became our ransom, our atonement. Drink this cup in remembrance of Christ's blood for your sins. Now let's sing along, O oh, Holy Night.
our Savior, you're here in this place. We worship you. We give you all the glory, all the honor, praise. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. Well, Merry Christmas, church family. Thank you for joining us tonight for our Christmas Eve service. We look forward to see you Sunday, 915, back here online. And if you feel comfortable, join us at 11 a.m. for our live service. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for celebrating with us. Uh, if you'd like to give a year-end gift uh, to Jesus, you can send that in to Cornerstone. We appreciate your generosity. We are uh, looking forward to doing some needed maintenance in our worship center. Until next week, God bless. God bless you.